Not only does she have racing in her blood, she was literally brought up at a racetrack. One of just eight drivers to clinch silverware in the inaugural W Series season. And this year, she's the sole American on the grid. We're in the grandstand with Sabra Cook. Well, we are in the grandstand with Sabra Cook, the 2019 W Series participant and a 2021 W Series participant. Hello, Sabra. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for coming on. Now, Sabra, of course, 2020 didn't go to plan for anybody, but we've seen or I've seen on your on your social media quite a lot of fitness stuff that you've been doing as well. Has it been a big personal development year in terms of your fitness for getting back into racing? I don't know. I, I don't think it's necessarily that. I think I'm just being more open about sharing it now. I Before, I, I guess I was so busy, like especially with, with working full time when I was in like 2019, that I was like, didn't have a lot of time as much to, you know, take content. And, and so I've really been trying to build that social media and, and put more content out there and engage with more, more brands, because I think it also, it helps people, especially during this time when there's like maybe like motivation or lacking, like knowing how to work out at home. So yeah, I just, I just tried to share more content. It wasn't that I was working out more than, more than I have been. I was just more public about it. I'm guessing a little bit of that, and maybe I'm reading between the lines incorrectly, but that maybe ties to being attractive to sponsors. Yeah, so it's uh, that's that's day to day. Like most of my time is spent networking and trying to put you know people together, trying to put businesses together, and and trying to get sponsorship because obviously you don't come from a uh, from a large amount of resources myself, so. I just have to find those amazing people that will you know, support me and and that find businesses that I think I can help put together in order to benefit everyone. So it's a it's a day to day thing. It's a day to day thing. I've got to imagine your presence on the international stage with W Series would have certainly helped a little bit. Hundred percent. That's definitely it. I mean, W Series. I, I don't. I mean, I would go as far as to say that W Series maybe saved my career or just took it to the next level because it was going to be hard with me going over and working for Infinity and Renault to be able to, you know, race. Um, especially if it wasn't with W Series, like coming back to the states and racing, that would have been very difficult. So it was. It couldn't have come at a better time. I really have to thank them for for helping me build my brand and my awareness even more. It's the only uh, situation that I've been put in that I don't have to worry about funding and I just show up and drive. So that, that for me is a big weight off my shoulders. It obviously lets me, allows me to be more focused, um, less, less stressed about the money and everything else. So for me, it was like um, a dreamlike situation. Going back way before W Series, you, uh, you seem to have a lot of uh, racing in the blood. Sport is just such a big thing in the US, especially going through school and so on. But motorsport, not particularly traditional of a route. It's not like you'll get a scholarship for that. So how did all that come about? So for, for the go-karting stuff, so my dad, he raced for cross and supercross professionally back in the 80s. And he and my mother, didn't, my brother and I raced motorcycles. So he found karting after he retired from motorcycles and just liked it. You know, it felt, he likes, he's obviously an adrenaline junkie and so got, um, got interested in that. And then he and my uncle and my grandfather and an investor, they actually ended up building a karting track um, where I grew up. And so I ended up, I mean, I spent, I don't, couldn't even tell you how much time at the karting track, just running around with my cousins and chasing. We have tons of like wildlife and lizards out here. So we would like chase lizards and go drive our go-karts and build forts. And so that, that was my, that was really my childhood. You were karting into your twenties, unlike we see, you know, some of your competitors in W series, for example, and a lot of the, uh, the European feeder series. That was, that was purely funding related. I just didn't have the money to move the cars. I tried and just wasn't able to put it together until 2017. How different were the worlds? So on track, off track, obviously it sounds like sponsorship is such a big thing. How different was it when you jumped into, into single seaters? Um, it, it was a big jump, um, especially like when I tried to do a few of the USF 2000 races and USF 4 races in 2018. 
the scale of the budget that you need to do a full season is just, it's crazy. So selling testing and practice is not sexy. So, we, you know, sponsors don't want to be like, oh, yeah, I'll sponsor you for that test that no one's going to be there. <laughs> so um, getting, um, getting the funding to do the proper amount of practice and testing to, in order to go to the race and do well didn't happen. So it was, it was difficult. I had a big learning curve and I'm very blessed that later, uh, you know, a couple of years later, I met some amazing people that helped me grow and, and make that big step up in performance, but there's definitely some things I would have done differently and things I wish I would have known back then. What was the route from you racing to getting into W Series? Yeah, so uh, I think they, they reached out to me and asked for me to submit an application. Um, so I, I obviously sent in my application and um, got picked as one of the 60 that went to Austria um, to, to go through those three or so days of really intense valuations. And um, like you said, it was car control. It was smooth driving. It was um, just awareness. It was um, you know, consistency, just outright speed, like uh, how, how well we can speak in front of other people and how we work in a team and our, you know, our mental strengths and everything. So it was, it was a very, very fleshed out evaluation. And, and um, it went well. There was 12 of us that got picked early on and they, was, they said, okay, you've got your spot, you're confirmed. So we were like, <gasps> and then we felt so bad though, because like the last day there was like six spots left. And so the other girls had to sh do like a you know last day shootout for these six spots, and I'm sure it was extremely stressful for them. But um, it was it was a really great experience. Was that just the most unique experience to go there and be like, no, I want you guys to do well, even though I want to beat you in a few months' time? You're right. I guess it is a little bit different, and I, I don't want to say it's. I don't want to say. I think it maybe it had to do with the fact of, that we're all you know female and kind of started to make friendships and, um, you know, bond with each other because that was the first time that we've been in a situation where there's so many women that share the same passions with us, have had very similar experiences to us. And like, so I think everyone was, it was just a cool thing to be a part of. It was, I think that was maybe part of it. We just, we just bonded with a few of the girls and really hoped that, you know, that they would make it through and we could be with them the rest of the season. And the rest of the season you were with them indeed. So it was a bit of a, a rocky start, I guess. The first two races were rough. And uh, I, you know, I, I made some mistakes, but uh, I definitely learned from them. On the Zolder broadcast, for example, we saw that you had some damage on your nose. Do you remember what the situation was, how that came about? So what happened is, I think it was, maybe it was Gosha and Esme. They ended up, I think, they, I think it was those two, correct me if I'm wrong, but there was two cars basically that came together in front of us, I, Vivian broke much earlier than I was expecting her to. And so I was like full lock, like just trying to stop the car. Um, but it, it, you know, it pushed her off the road and, and dented in my front nose. And so because of that, um, I got a drive through penalty. In better, uh, better still memories, Asen, you were just rapid there. Obviously you've got a bit of a bad memory because you had another penalty. Yeah, so talk us talk us through that weekend because that would have been a weekend of the biggest mixed emotions. Yeah, it was, you know, I I think at the beginning, you know, it was a lot. I came, Well, I came into the season as literally the least experienced driver on the W Series grid. I think I had 12 races and in a, in a car that they, you know, that they recognized. And then Assen, um, you know, I, I had good momentum coming from, you know, Norris Ring and Sano and... Yeah, made made the error of starting in the wrong pit box before the race. And so I started farther back than I was supposed to. And um, even though that technically farther back is worse for me, but they, you know, the people behind me also had to stop for, start one farther back. So that's why they they ended up giving me the drive through penalty, which was not not ideal. So um, yeah, it, was, it wasn't great. But then um, the reverse grid race the next day was able to just really, really get a great start and um, put my head down and really like a uh, few laps in, I thought that I was gonna be able to actually win the race because I was doing well, I was catching um, Vivian, or not Vivian, um, Sarah and Megan. 
And then the car went into limp mode actually for, I think it was two laps. And it was almost like a, it's a very like disheartening feeling because you're just like, please car, just keep going. And they, they, it just went into, into limp mode there for a little while. And I was able to just keep going and it eventually went away. Still able to finish in third place. So it was, it was a fun race. Of course, the lightning start and I've had to rewatch it in slow-mo because I was like, that must have been a jump start. You were so quick off the line. But well, you know what it was is I was like so stressed about getting a proper start. Like, and the reason why I think like the day before when I started in the wrong grid spot, I was so focused on making sure I looked at the lights correctly because at, with DTM, they had done the start a little bit different. So I was like, I need to get a good start. If I can get a good start, I can, you know, my race pace is usually always better than, than my qualifying. So I was like, I just need to get a good start. And I was so focused on that. And then in the reverse, grid, I was just like, okay, like I need to, I need to make this happen. And uh, it, it, it just worked out. Do you think qualifying is not a mistake necessarily, but a weak point? You never qualified higher than 10th place. I don't think it was. Is that something that you... 100%. But do you think if you nail that, then you're going to be in a championship fight for 2021? Um, I, I think that qualifying is definitely one of the points that I've really been focusing on improving. Um, that is something that I have room to grow for sure. Um, I'm very, I'm very, I'm doing a lot on trying to improve that. And I think I am getting better at it. So I'm, I'm, I'm feeling very positive for, uh, for this season. Um, as far as fighting for the championship, I, uh, it's hard to say. I mean, I still have quite a lot of catch up to play. I think to some of you know, the top girls like Jamie and Baitska and Emma and Alice, they've got so much experience um, that it, it's going to be hard to be very hard but I don't think that it's completely out of the question that if I continue on like the upward trend that I that I have been and I keep working on those things that are you know maybe not my not my strengths right now that it is, it is possible to maybe be in, be in the top five um, at some point in the season. The U.S. flag is just just for you now. Do you feel that's going to you know increase the pressure? You've got an American race after all, or is that something that you don't really think about? Um, I don't. I guess like I'm not really thinking of it as a negative. I'm thinking of it as a positive because I'm feeling like this is awesome. I get to be the only one to represent the U.S. And then when we go to Coda, it's going to be amazing because I've got so many people here in the states that are like we want to come watch this race and they were all super super bummed in 2020 when they it got canceled obviously and they couldn't so i am more excited than anyone else formula one that's a pretty big deal how did you handle the news when you heard that you'd be supporting formula one this year i mean i'm I'm, uh, just like the other girls i'm so excited it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome and I'm really thankful to the W Series that they were able to make that pairing and, and give us such an insane platform to, to be able to perform on. The 2021 calendar list is, is fantastic. So I've got an inkling that Kota might be your most the race you're most excited for this season. Is, uh, is there any particular tracks that you are holding in high esteem? Mexico would be one of the most insane because I feel like they're, they're similar to you know, the, like the Italian fans, right? When, when they go to like Monza, and it's just like, they are so excited and they're so like, they're usually very, they're super nice and they're just like happy to be there and happy to be engaged. So I, if, if it was, if I were to get on the podium in Mexico, it would be pretty special. Coda is going to be awesome because it's going to be a home race. Um, as far as like iconic tracks that I'm excited to drive on is really, I'd say Spa is probably top right now racing on spa is going to be so cool i can't express how jealous i am that you'll be able to go around spa in a free car so have we you need been... a double seater w series car and give rides saber if you make that happen i want i want in that car <laughs> i want in that car so yeah i'll see what, i mean who knows we're recording this at the start of February, and last week for you, Daytona, you uh, you went there t- for the 24-hour race to watch, and before that, you were racing in the Mazdas. Tell us all about all about that. It was so much fun. Like maybe some of the closest racing that I've been a part of since I since I left karting because it's just 
the draft is where it's like three seconds a lap. So if you're off by yourself, you're pretty much um, yourself for Sunday drive because you are not going to go anywhere without a buddy. So it was, it was a lot, it was different. And the, the track, you know, the cars, they're quite a bit slower than, than uh, what I have been driving lately. So it was like, oh man, I'm going to have to be really patient on some things, let the car set. Like, and it also has ABS, which I'm not used to. That was the first car I've ever raced that had ABS. So that was, that was different too. And I'd never been that, you know, first time at Daytona. So that was, it was a whole big thing, but it was so much fun. I can see that you're still riding the high from it. But more seriously though, Sabra, we witnessed on your Instagram story, you stealing a car that uh, you tried to pass off as you left your keys, but you were definitely there with a person to say, can you take the keys from that car? Yeah, so <laughs> um, I've, never, I've never ever locked my keys in the car before. And we went to um, this awesome, cute little restaurant called the Ormond Garage. And I we finished dinner and I came out. So it's a rental car. So I was unexperienced with the, with the operation. Of it. And um, the, the car lets you pop the trunk without actually unlocking it. So I popped the trunk and I actually grabbed a jacket out of the back to, and then went to go cl close the trunk. <laughs> the keys were still in the trunk. So the thank goodness, um, the people that uh, we were at dinner with is Haggerty, and they're so sweet, so nice. They've been letting us hang out all weekend, and um, they have Haggerty roadside assistance. The nice truck driver, Michael, um, was extremely funny and taught us how to break into a car. So that was that was useful information if I ever locked myself out again. Well, Sabre, we honestly all at the grandstand Really, really hope you have a terrific season. We wish you all the best and thank you for being on the grandstand. No problem. Thank you so much for having me. It's have you been told, by the way, that you kind of look and talk like Daniel Ricardo? The amount of strangers who've come and say, are you like a, a budget Daniel Ricardo and stuff? I'm like, I've had worse, <laughs> worse insults before. No, really, like it, it really does. Like you do remind me of Daniel Ricardo very, very much. Well, I'll take that as a compliment, Sabre. That's. Uh... I mean, I would. I'd want to be like Daniel Ricardo. That's... Yeah. Hell of a likable guy, right? Yes. Yes, just a little bit. Um...